Instead, a policy of balance between Iran and Israel would aim to pull both of them out of their isolation and, and out of their paranoia. This ought to be the goal of American policy, not trying to use the rhetoric and policies of the past to beat Iran with a stick and then essentially to say that what Israel does is usually tolerable, even though they're, can be, they can be rascals at times, but in the end, we're always their friend. We need to find a way in which the interests of these two countries, both of which actually coincide over the long run, can be, be brought a little closer together in the short run. On Turkey, before we break and then come back to discuss this further, Stephen Kinzer, the repression of Kurds, of Armenians, where does that fit into the democratic tradition that you spoke about? Turkey is going around the world now telling everybody, including the United States, it's no good to try to resolve political conflicts by force. You have to do it by conciliation, by negotiation, by compromise. Not, on, not surprisingly, there must be plenty of people in the world who at least think, if they don't say to Turkey, why don't you follow your own advice? When you're dealing with the Kurds in southeastern Turkey, why don't you announce that the idea of military confrontation with the uh, Kurdish revolutionary movement is over? And we're going to try to resolve the Kurdish problem with the same uh, conciliatory policies that we're advocating others to follow. There's no doubt that this is one of the last remaining drags on Turkey's ability to play a big role in that region as the chief conciliator. Turkey has to start following its own advice, not just with the Kurds, but I would say also with Israel. After after this terrible conflict that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago on the Mediterranean, I'd like to see Turkey now say, the world understands the situation. Everything that happened was very clear. Now it's time to move forward and uh, see if Turkey can try to build on this to uh, find a relationship that not only will allow it to coexist again a more, in a more friendly way with Israel, but will also produce some benefit for the people of Gaza. Stephen Kinzer, former New York Times foreign correspondent, we're going to come back to our discussion. His new book is called Reset, Iran, Turkey, and America's Future. Stay with us. by Nasir Sharma here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Our guest is Stephen Kinzer, author of Reset, Iran, Turkey, and America's Future. I want to turn to the issue of sanctions against Iran. You're talking about resetting the relationship, the powerful triangle that could be between the U.S., Turkey, and Iran. The U.N. Security Council just approved a fourth round of sanctions on Iran over its alleged nuclear program. President Obama called these, quote, the toughest sanctions ever faced by the Iranian government. On a visit to China last week, the Iranian president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, slammed the sanctions. The Iranian nation not only believes that this resolution lacks legal value, but it also believes that the resolution is indicative of the weakness of the nations involved. The issue of nuclear energy is merely an excuse. The government of the United States wants to swallow the Middle East. By conquering the Middle East, it wants to make its presence concrete in the world. I will say this now, Iran will never let the United States do this. 
That's the Iranian president. Turkey and Brazil were the only two countries that voted against the resolution, arguing they saw no reason for imposing more sanctions against Iran. Iran recently reached a deal with Turkey and Brazil to ship most of its enriched uranium to Turkey in exchange for low-level nuclear fuel to run a medical reactor. Last week, the Turkish president, uh, Tayyip Erdogan, emphasized that Turkey would continue diplomatic initiatives with Iran. This from the beginning, we have always advocated a diplomatic solution to the standoff. That is why we voted against the resolution. They said they are willing to negotiate. Therefore, we will continue to do our best to keep the Tehran Agreement on the table with Brazil and Iran. That's the Turkish Prime Minister, Edwan. Stephen Kinzer, talk about the U.S. Um, uh, relationship with Iran and these latest sanctions and what they mean. Well, first of all, the sanctions are minimal. They had to be watered down so much in order to get enough support in the Security Council that they're really not going to have any serious effect on Iran. Um, I'm not against sanctions as a matter of moral principle. I'm more about results. So I'm asking myself, what's the end game here? What, what do we intend or hope to achieve by these sanctions? If we really believe that these sanctions can make Iran kneel and surrender its nuclear program, uh, that might be a good reason to impose them. But nobody believes that's going to happen. So if that's the case, what is the point? What is, where, what is the goal here? What are we trying to reach? Now, Turkey has a message for the United States about Iran, and that is, we can find a way out of this. There, there might be a way to deflate this uh, conflict and, and de-escalate it. I actually was in Turkey a couple of weeks ago when the deal that uh, Brazil and Turkey struck with Iran was announced, and there was quite a bit of jubilation there. It really seemed like this terribly escalating confrontation between the U.S. and Iran over the nuclear issue had now been, if not resolved, uh, at least moved to a lower level, and there seemed to be a way out. It took about six hours for people in Washington to wake up, and then they immediately slapped down this agreement. Uh, Secretary Clinton and others were remarkably strong in rejecting it totally, and then accusing uh, Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey and, and Lula in Brazil of being kind of uh, naive, innocent, stupid schoolboys who got fooled uh, and snookered by these ever crafty Iranians. Uh, it really was quite a strong reaction, and I think uh, the Turks were quite surprised. Actually, I think Erdogan and Lula believed that they were doing the U.S. a favor. In fact, there's some indication at least one of them had a letter from Obama. They thought they were doing. Uh, uh, they were doing a deal with Iran that would allow the U.S. a way out of the crisis and would allow Iran a way out of the crisis. Now, the American reaction was that that deal wasn't complete enough. There were holes in it, and that was true. But if the U.S. wanted to, it could have seen the glass half full and could have said, this is the great basis for uh, possible more negotiations that could lead to a way out of this crisis. It's not good enough, but it's a great start. But instead, we said, this is no good, and we reject it entirely. Uh, so the Turks are saying, we can help build you a bridge to Tehran. Listen to us. We're the ones in the neighborhood that are going to suffer if there's huge chaos and upheaval in Iran, like there was when you dropped your army into Iraq. We don't want that to happen. We have some advice for you on how you might be able to build a relationship with Iran that might achieve the goals that all of us want. 